And it is great to have Terry Crews here with us, and thank you for joining us this morning, Terry. Yeah. And as we saw, it's all started from a, a tweet you wrote. Yeah. And, and can you tell us what happened? First of all, um, you know, back in February 2016, I was assaulted by Adam Bennett, who is the head of the motion picture department at William Morris Endeavor, one of the biggest agencies in the world, period. And uh, what was wild is that my wife and I were at an event for, with Adam Sandler, and uh, you know, the, the thing is, he's also Adam Sandler's agent, he's Sylvester Stallone's agent, he's Eddie Murphy's agent, and you know, he's connected to you know, probably everyone I know in the business. And now, this is the thing, I did not know this man. So you did not know him before this? I have never had a conversation with him, ever. Okay, I knew of him, and I knew just because it's a it's an agency thing. But I, I the mm. first time I ever actually had an interaction with him was at this event, and I literally I'm looking at him, and he's basically staring at me, and he's sticking his tongue out, and you know it's overt, just overtly sexual kind of uh, uh, tongue moves. And I'm sitting there like it's a party, it's packed, the whole thing, and I'm looking like, uh, is this a joke? I mean, I don't, I don't understand. It was actually so bizarre. And he keeps coming over to me. He comes over to me. I stick my hand out, and he literally takes his hand and puts it and squeezes my genitals, and I, I'm jump back like, hey, hey. And, and he's like, and he's still licking his tongue out and all this stuff. And I go, dude, what are you doing? What are you doing? And then he comes back again. And he just won't stop. And I, 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 then I really got forceful and pushed him back. He bumps into all the other party goers and the whole thing. And he starts giggling and laughing. And let me tell you, Mike, I have never felt more emasculated, more objectified. I was horrified. I went over to Adam right then and there, and I'm Adam, man, come get your boy. What is the what? What is his problem? And so you know what? And he, Adam was your looking. Wife, and your wife is with my you. wife is right there. Now let me say he was acting so weird and so strange that I put myself between you know, him and my wife because I, I with this tongue thing, I was I, I couldn't understand. Let me tell you, it's so bizarre. I wake up every morning wondering, did this really happen? It's nuts. And, and you said it, your wife was there. She saw the entire yes. thing. You, you said you went over to Adam immediately. What was his response? He was like, well, I, I told him, I said, hey, man, he's, he's grabbing my junk. I was, I was like, Adam, what's wrong with your boy? And he looked like he didn't understand because it was bizarre to both of us. Mm -hmm. And we just, and I just literally, I, I, I said, that's now. When I looked at him, it was rage. And when I say rage, I, I felt like I could punch a hole in his head. Okay, but this is the deal. My wife told me three years earlier, she said, Terry, you can never handle any situation like this with violence. You are a target. You can be going to be baited and pulled if you react physically. And let me tell you something, and I've done it before, but this is the deal. When, when I grabbed her hand and I left that party, we were only there for like a half an hour, and I got in the car, I almost ripped the steering wheel off. And she just kept saying, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. And I just said, man. She calmed, she calmed you down she, with that. She calmed me down because she was the one who told me that this kind of thing would happen and that if you could be baited. And this is the thing, if I would have just retaliated in defense, I would be under the jail right now. And that's one thing I knew that being a large African-American man in America, I would immediately be seen as a thug, but I'm not a thug. Because there are a, lot of, artist. Because a lot of people would say, if some, that happened to me, the first thing I would do is I would strike back at right. somebody, but you chose not to do that. Well, it, it literally, my wife had me prepared. This is so beautiful about it because she had me prepared. She knew something like this could happen. And man, and, and when it did, she was just right there for me. She's right there with me and she saw the whole thing. And then, then last week, we, we saw it in the piece, but you filed a police report yes. last week. Yes. So what do you hope comes of this? You know, people need to be held accountable, Mike. You know, this is the deal about Hollywood, and, and it's, a, it's an abuse of power. You know, this is abuse. This guy, again, he's one of the most powerful men in Hollywood, and he looked at me at the end as if, you know, who's going to believe you? So you didn't think anybody would believe you if you came forward? Last year? No. 
No, actually, I let it go. Actually, I put it in the back of my head, and I understood why women everywhere had to let it go. But let me tell you, when the Weinstein thing started happening, I got PTSD. I was going, oh my God, this exact thing happened to me. I understand why they won't come forward. And I'm gonna tell you, a lot of times people go, well, why didn't you come forward sooner? But this is the thing, when a, when a person of power breaks that boundary and violates that boundary, you're a prisoner of war. Immediately, you're in a camp because you're trying to figure out when is the right time to come out. When did the guard turns their head when they leave a door open? You're digging tunnels with spoons and you're trying to find a way out and you get out and then you finally find freedom and somebody says, well, it must not be that bad. Uh, you you should have came out sooner. And you're like, I'm free. I finally got free. And you, this is the thing that a lot of people just don't understand and they in, end up blaming the victim. And I have totally said, I will not be shamed. I will not be shamed. I did nothing wrong. Nothing. And the whole deal is people are like, well, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? You know what? Why don't you ask what he's doing? Why, is not, why isn't Adam Bennett sitting here right now explaining his side? Good question. And you, and you, wrote, that, you wrote that tweet a few days after Harvey Weinstein's story broke. Exactly. So, so you felt empowered by everyone else's stories. I did. That let you step out of the darkness, if you want to say. Let me tell you, I did, I was a keynote speaker at this place called Center for Cre Community Solutions that dealt with relationship violence, sexual assault, and I heard all these stories from all these women who were just, who had finally get strength from each other's stories, and they came out, and I said, man, what kind of man would I be to tell my kids, if someone touches you where you don't want to be touched, and, and tell someone, tell someone, and then I don't do it. And let me tell you something, it freed me. I knew instantly that I had to tell my story so that other people could be free. And I didn't even name names. I was just in support of these women because they were called liars. They were, called, they were like, you're just looking for a payday. You're doing it. And I was like, this is not what this is about. Mm -hmm. your, your dream is like a child. What, what you're trying to do, your dreams, goals, aspirations is, is just as valuable as your children. And, and when someone binds up your dream and holds a gun to his head and says it's going to kill it, if you don't do this, if you don't stay quiet, if you don't do this, it's, it's a hostage situation. You are dealing with a terrorist. And I have my dream. I've worked so hard for this. Uh, what can I say? It's one of those things. I survived the NFL. I got the entertainment. I'm here. And I get assaulted by my own agent? It makes, it makes no sense, and it was filed to the core, and it still, still shocks me. I'll tell you what, I'm glad you came here to share your story. We Hopefully this is a big turning point for you and for a lot of the victims out there. You we appreciate it. you, Terry. George? Boy, that was a powerful interview. Wow. So much has been unleashed by this Me Too movement.